Hey y'all. So I'm pretty sure by now you have seen the first episode of the new season of Ready to Love in Miami again. And if I look familiar, that is because I am in the show. <laughs> and the first episode, yes, I was on the bottom about to be sent home, okay? But by the grace of God, I was not. So we're gonna get into it. It's a lot to digest there. But first, let's start from the very beginning. A very good place to start. Shout out to Sound of Music. For the beginning, it is the promo shoots when um, the announcement that a new season is coming. And, you know, we had some publications like Essence and such report on it. And our promo pictures were featured. You know, the promo pictures are the first impression. And you know, the first impression can be the everlasting impression. When it comes to my promo picture, I'm like, yo, who is this woman? Who is this? I don't know her. Who is this woman? I don't know her. I can't recognize her. I can't even see her because the picture was so pixelated. Like you could see no type of details of what I really look like. I was unrecognizable. It was very surprising because I was expected to get a close up like as much as my freckles were being talked about in the photo shoot, as much as my freckles were being talked about in the photo shoot, <laughs> I was expecting a close up, three fourths, half something. Instead, I got a whole pixelated mess. What happened? What's up? <laughs> Yeah, that was disappointing. You know, you start looking at the comments, like if I think I look bad, then damn, I wonder what the public thinks. And I saw a couple, they were mostly talking negatively about the quality of the, of the photos. So one person said I looked older than I actually was because of the quality of the photos. There's this YouTube couple who actually did a whole ranking of like just based off the pictures of alone who do you think is going to go home first and a couple people did say me so you know it is what it is i look back at it and i probably wouldn't have worn that dress yeah that probably wasn't the choice especially if i knew that they were going to do a full body like close up it's not too bad but you know I, I wasn't really feeling it. I was prepared for that to be just my interview look. You're just gonna see the top. I wasn't prepared to like actually take a photo shoot with it. You have to be prepared. Then there was a promo group shot, right? Like there was people talking like, man, is this Photoshop? Are they all Photoshopped in this picture? Because there's no way they took this picture together. Guys, yes, we took this picture together, all of us. It just so happened they picked the most, the one that was just, that just lacked cohesion. <laughs> Especially with me, like I definitely noticed that. I was like, wow, like, damn, like you can spot me out like a sore thumb. Some people were saying like, damn, is she ready for like a cover girl photo shoot? Cause I was doing the most. Especially with the dress I had on, like that was the dress I wore to the mixer. I would have gave given that, a change of heart too because I only wore that dress to like you know when I did do photo shoots that dress when it comes to photo shoots is great you know you can you know blow it with the wind it's draped it can do so many things you know but to be on a reality show that you're meeting single men at a mixer with other single ladies Maybe that wasn't the dress to really catch him, I guess, you know? So it's just a learning experience, it's cool. But one thing I did like about the promos were the promo teasers, the video. The cinematography, the videography, the cinematography was really good. Like, it captured us beautifully. 
and I felt really represented physically. Like you can see me really, like you can even see my freckles, you can see the detail within my face and 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 what makes me me um, on the outside, you know, they capture some, uh, some beautiful moments. So I appreciated that, that made up for the promo shoot. Sorry, but yeah. And then, the premiere comes. The premiere is here. And I really feel like just based off of just based off of the first episode, I'm being depicted as like the fun girl, the one who loves to smile, who loves to laugh, having a good time. They kept, they kept showing me laugh. You can hear my laugh throughout the show. I mean, it's all good. I love my laugh. I hear my laugh. It's contagious. It's great. I was having a good time, hence the reason why I was laughing. Thing is, what I, what I didn't see is um, emphasis on me being a career woman. That is something I pride myself on, how I have progressed in my career. The reason why I've moved around so much has been based on building my career. Now that I'm pretty stable in my in my career, I'm I'm um, taking love a bit more seriously, right? There were opportunities to emphasize uh, the side of me that's a bit more serious. My conversation that I had with Corbea about her doing journalism, they took a huge chunk out of that. We both do journalism. Uh, we both worked at USA Today and we were both from Jersey. So we had a lot in common. And then when Dre came over, we were talking about radio because I've been in radio as well. And also the music industry. They decided not to show any of that. Instead, they like to show me laugh. <laughs> I'm the laughing girl, you know? But I get it. It's not ready to be friends. It's ready to love. So they, they can only put so much in 45 minutes of an episode, right? I'm in TV. I understand these things. But I'm just like, damn, like, that, that's, 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 that's all the levels that you're showing of me? So many layers. I, I was preaching this the whole time. So many layers, man. So much to see when it comes to me. <laughs> I also wish that they showed uh, some of my conversations with other men besides Demario a bit more. I had a good conversation with Dre. We geeked out over movies, music, Blue. We had um, a good time talking about, you know, some smart television. I'm a movie junkie. I'm into television because I work in TV. So I love smart writing, uh, intellectual scripts, intellectual dialogue, and even like just smart humor. I also had a good conversation with Tony too that they really did not show. Um, we were talking about future goals, like, you know, being bi-coastal, that's a dream of mine. When Simone and Rashid came, you know, they, sh they selectively showed certain conversations they had, but they definitely missed the conversation that me, Dre, Marcia, and Lyndon had with, with them. And even during that time, like Simone was like, you're the funny one. You are the funny one, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, I don't mind being the funny. I love being the funny one, making people feel good. I just love the uh, the intellect it takes to be humorous. Being funny is something not to really take for granted when someone's funny. The thing about the funny girl is that not all guys appreciate that. Some guys, but not all guys. Some are intimidated by that. Some guys don't want you to be funnier than them. And the thing about like being a funny girl is that when you're old and gray, you're still gonna be that funny girl, okay? It's never gonna be a dull moment. And I'm not sure if these group of guys were really thinking long-term like that, at least in this episode, um, when it comes to me. Because not only am I easy on the eyes, I think, but I have so much else to offer, like a great sense of humor, never a dull moment, uniqueness, and so many other traits that um, I was just waiting for them to want to at least discover. I really didn't get a sense of urgency of really them trying to get to know me. 
none of them asked me, well, what does Z stand for? What's your real name? Like when I came in, I had to offer that. And it's weird because like, when I have regular conversations with men, like just in real life, like that's one of their first questions. And then we have a whole conversation about the meaning behind my name and why it makes me me. And uh, I was so willing and open for people to get to know me, you know, because people who know me love me. To know me is to really love, to really know me is to love me for sure. When you did see me have a conversation with someone, it was the majority of that time was with Demario, which was weird because I really talked, for the most part, I talked to Dre throughout the night. So there were occasions where we talked organically and then there was occasions that we were put together to talk. So it was weird how like he was sent home and then it was just like, damn, but I talked to him the most. So like if he was sent home, that was a missed opportunity for me to talk to other people and make connections, you feel me? Going back to my conversation with Demario, there's just so much that wasn't, wasn't shown, like so much stuff that was left out and was cut out. It's crazy, like, even when the topic of past relationships coming up, all you heard me say was like, oh, you know, I was impulsive, I moved too fast into a relationship with people that I didn't know enough. I wish they showed a bit more of my answer to that. I was basically saying, you know, I need to know my partner more before I jump into a relationship with them. I need to take my time to get to know you as a friend. I was really big on that throughout my time. And then you know, the topic of the whole alpha male, alpha woman thing came up. It's just such an old topic. It gives off a sense of vibe of competition. And I just feel like throughout history, we were competing too much. And that was something that is um, a generational curse almost like a slave mentality, this competition, black man versus black woman. And I don't wanna to get too into that because that is a topic for another day. A strong man can be with a strong woman. Two alpha people can be together. And to be an alpha person doesn't mean you don't have any other nurturing sides. Like I said in the beginning, of the episode, I like to cater to my man. My workplace and my profession, I can also be very strong and assertive when it comes to success. When Demario asked me, do I like alpha males? That's a yes, because I would love to be with a man that I can feel safe following. I would love that. But first you have to prove that you can be my safety. You can be my safe haven. And with me being an alpha woman, that's just only a little part of me. There's so much more to offer. I don't know why they made that such a topic because the only time that was brought up was in my conversation with Demario. Him asking that question, I felt like he was indicating that he's an alpha male. That came off kind of contradicting. When he asked me like, how would you handle being with the alpha male being an alpha woman? And I said, you know, I have a lot of leadership qualities. So it's nice to like, it went to come home and my alpha male has a plan already. If he wants to go out, he knows where we're going. All I have to do is get dressed. When I use that as an example, you didn't see the part where he said, well, you know, it's like, it's nice for the woman to plan too. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, that is nice. But that contradicts the whole question you initially asked me. You said, how do I handle an alpha male being an alpha woman? And that was the answer I, I gave you. I, I give them the control. You can, like, I want you to have the control. I want to be able to follow you. A man with a plan is as alpha as it gets. You hear now? Him saying like, you know, well, it's also nice when a woman plans. Well, that, doesn't that take away from your alphaness? It just seemed kind of contradicting. When he mentioned in his, his confessional that I just seemed like, like I wasn't saying what I specifically wanted in a man in death. I had to, I had to ask myself, well, did he even ask me that question specifically? Was he direct in asking me that question? You see, he was direct in asking me if I like alpha men. That's not, that's not saying, what do you want in a man? Throughout this process, my themes in terms of what, what I wanted in a man 
with someone who has patience, patience to understand the person that I am, where I can be comfortable enough to open my walls, you know, take my walls down. We can build a friendship, right? I wanted a friend. I wanted someone who had core values of integrity, um, spirituality, um, and someone who's understanding and very empathetic uh, because I'm a sensitive person and I need someone with, with strong emotional intelligence. This is something that I preach throughout my time. I just wonder if he really wanted to know what I really wanted in a man. Because if he asked me, I would have answered. I would have answered. I would have answered because of the situation, the experiment that we were in times of the essence right in real life like i'm kind of you know i take my time telling a man directly like what i exactly want because here's the thing if you're talking to the wrong man you run the risk of um that person playing pretend so if you tell the wrong man too soon what you look for a man they're going to play pretend and act like they have all those characteristics, right? You're eventually swept away and you're comfortable, you let your guard down and hey, maybe you get intimate. Maybe you end up having sex, right? So now you can possibly have soul ties. I, I can't speak for every woman, but I know for me, like, I can't just have casual sex. Like, if I have sex with you, I am gonna have, I, I am gonna have feelings for you. I can't just detach that. I can't detach emotions and sex, and I don't want to because sex is sacred. It's supposed to be special, not something that is just a sport. Because when it's just a sport, it's not really good. What are you learning about the person? You're not learning what the person really wants out of the experience. You're just getting it in for you. Like a win is a win. No, no, no. You become intimate with this person that is pretending to show you that they are the man that you dreamed of. You can end up being with the wrong person. They end up getting comfortable and the real person starts to show. And you're wondering, well, what happened to that other person that I like so much? That person wasn't even real. The real person is coming out now after you got comfortable. So now you're at a point where it's like, okay, now I, I can see how this person might not be right for me, but I already like them. I already have feelings for them. And you're hoping that that other person comes back. So that's why it's just, it's very tricky if you tell a person too soon what you want in a man, if you tell the wrong man. So that's why I like, I like to take my time in real life to see what a guy is gonna show me, like show me if you're what I want. And when I see those good qualities, then I can express that I love when you do this. I love when you do that. I love your consistency. I love that you're reliable. I love that you're a man of your word. I love that you do what you say. Now I can trust you to do more things. That's when you can start really um, sharing what you, what you desire in a man. When they already showed you some of the things that you look for. Lastly, in terms of my conversation with Demario, that whole like version joke, please don't think that was just random. I just bought that up because I was spaced out and everywhere. No, we were talking about sex, we were talking about intimacy and that ha that's how that came up, simple as that. Let's get to the elimination, right? There were three people that said my name, two, Two out of the three people I was not surprised about because the feelings were mutual. Anthony and Lyndon, I was getting homie vibes too. We didn't even speak enough for me to get more than that. Like Anthony, I think I only spoke to him when we were lined up to, you know, talk to Tommy or, you know, when, when we were getting instructions. Um, and we were talking about surface level stuff. So we didn't really have time to go in depth at all. So yeah, I was getting homie vibes too. I was looking forward to speaking to him because I know he's a girl dad. Men who, who raise little girls have more empathy for women from um, past experience. So I was looking forward to that. But in the meantime, he, he was giving me the same homie vibes I was giving him. Same thing with Lyndon. Like I even said that in one of my confessionals, which you don't see. <laughs> he was giving me homie vibes too. 
He said I was everywhere. Yeah, I was everywhere. Like literally I was everywhere because it was, you know, it was speed dating on steroids. So it's like you have certain, you have a certain time with certain people and sometimes they would um, put you together with people. It, it didn't just all happen organically. It was, there were some parts that were, was like a simulation for the most part. So yeah, it was physically everywhere, but also if he thought I was mentally everywhere, I mean, I, I kind of was because here's the thing with me, like I have a sister, but I was raised as the only child. So when I get around people, I get so excited. Like I'm so into friendships. I'm so into meeting new people. Like new people makes me feel like I'm gonna learn and have a different type of adventure. So I'm on a natural high when I meet new people. And it's 16 of us, like, so yes, I was everywhere. <laughs> it's the first day, duh. So I was just like, okay, it is what it is. The person I was most surprised with was Demario. I felt like, our conversation that we had, even though a lot wasn't shown, it did go deeper than the surface. There's even more reason why I'm surprised, but I'm not gonna reveal that right now because that would definitely be a spoiler in case they decide to show it for episode two. Speaking of episode two, I did see some teasers that may come out. One is of me. I kind of made me feel some type of way. Another one, which I will share, is like my confessional look, okay? And all I got to say is about this look, love the look, but I am done. <laughs> I am so done with false lashes, like done. You know, I don't need them. I have enough lashes of my own. And sometimes it's a hit or miss. Like sometimes they look good on me and then sometimes it makes me look like I have like a shadow on my eye. And I'm like, damn, like, why I look different? Like, I look like two different faces. I'm over here looking like two face. So now I gotta deal with that. <laughs> Please be easy on me, y'all. Oh, y'all could be tough critics. Woo, child. But honey, I'm already my toughest critic. So please pipe down. Anyway, rather than that, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Comment below. Check out my social handles. I'll be back with my review and my opinions after episode two. So until then.